Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Come Christmas, on. Sean. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it is great that you could join us today. I don't know whether you've got up early, you've got little ones. We've got our grandchildren visiting with us for a couple of weeks. So they've been up at the crack of dawn. Others of you are just getting Heaven up in help us. pyjamas. <laughs> Some of them got the luxury of being in your pyjamas and you're having a nice coffee. But we just love it that you can mm. join us on this very special day. And, you know, why don't you share the link with your friends? Uh, why don't you uh, say hi, make a comment? Just let us know you're here because it really is special that we can celebrate Christmas Day together. Well, we're going to pray. And I'd encourage you to take this moment just to open your heart yeah. and say, Jesus, speak to me today. Yeah, yeah. This is the most wonderful event, the mm. Christ event. God stepping in and becoming one of us to save us. Yes. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I just thank you that you took this extraordinary step out of eternity, out of into time to come and be one of us in order to save us. And we just pray as we go through the service, celebrating your birth and acknowledging that that actually led to your death on our behalf, that there would be an encounter of your presence, of your power with each and every one of us. Mm. I thank you that you will meet us individually as we lean in to hear you, to worship you, and to celebrate your birth. Amen. Amen. Well, where would Christmas be without some carols and naturally mm. some worship, lifting up the name of Jesus? So we have a one, our team have, have pre uh, presented and prepared a beautiful arrangement of uh, carols and choruses that just lift up the name of Jesus. So why don't you join us today as Phoebe and the children start off by leading us with Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Oh 
how beautiful was that time of worship. Thank you, team, for those beautiful carols and worship. And it was just absolutely lovely. Well, today I want to share with you about journeying with others in search of Jesus Christ. And I love that scripture in Isaiah 9, verse 6. It says, For a child is born, a son is given to us. The government will rest upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And you know, there's many today who find the whole picture of Jesus, a little baby in a manger, someone, someone who's going to impact the world and save the world, absolutely ridiculous. Let's face it, how can a little baby make any difference to your circumstances? And the whole, the whole idea just seems ludicrous. But you know, a farmer or a gardener knows when they hold a seed, they know the potential there is in that for planting crops, for plants and a forest and what can grow. And yet the most important person in history to arrive in the world, Jesus Christ, was still and was and is still sneered at because they just don't realize that he was more than just a baby. Jesus' life was supernatural, right from his point of conception by the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit to his resurrection by his heavenly Father after his death on a cross. You see, God didn't send his son. Jesus to earth all those years ago as a superstar or someone who was so out of touch with humanity he was no earthly good at all. He started small with a baby. He allowed his son to experience life as a human being with all our struggles and all our emotions. And while Jesus chose to limit himself to what we are as earthly people, he also demonstrated what life can be like when you allow yourself to have a relationship with God with the life-changing power that is available to each one of us, not only for your own life, but to be able to help others. So let's look at those who first journeyed in search of Jesus. And it was the shepherds. And Luke 2 verses 8 to 16, we read in the Bible, that night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Saviour, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of armies of heaven praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest heaven. Peace on earth with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby lying in the manger. Can you imagine just for a moment what it must have been like for the angels? I mean, they're out in the, the, sorry, not for the angels, for the shepherds. They're out in the field and out of nowhere comes this angel. I mean, talk about, I, I don't have that happen, little less a vast host of them. No one had time to catch it on Instagram. Oh, the sense of awe that must have been there when, they, when that angel appeared. You know, just like being a tradie or being a shepherd or com was such common, yet you had to be skilled, but it was a common form of work back then. Yet in the normality of everyday work, angels just visited them. You know, no matter how mundane you may feel your life is, God can always visit you right where you are. You never know when something special is about to happen in your life, no matter what your age or what your circumstances. And I hope it motivates you to be in search of Jesus. Well, let's look at those who journeyed next in search of Jesus was the Magi, the wise men. In Matthew 2, 
verses 1 to 2, we read, After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Now the Magi were referred to here as wise men because they had studied many things. In our current times, they probably would have had many degrees after their names. So we see here that apart from the common shepherds journeying to see in search of Jesus, that very educated men also needed to see him. And you know, no matter what your background, we all have a need to search for Jesus. There is nothing to show that there were ever three wise men at all, only that they bought three gifts. And I like to sometimes imagine that there were just two of them. I've been brought up always three wise men, but I like to think as I've got older that there were just two of them. And having a spirit of generosity, they bought over and above as they worshipped Jesus. And what I love about this is how the Heavenly Father always takes care of the little details. The gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh that these wise men had bought would have been worth a lot financially. And when an angel appeared again to Joseph, warning him and instructing him to take Mary and Jesus to Egypt, they wouldn't have had enough time to save money at all if saving was even an option at the time because it was a long journey they were going to do. And Joseph and Mary, they were a poor family, as evidenced later in the book of Luke. And we see by the sacrifice that they bought when they presented Jesus in the temple. And God's heart is always to provide for his children and to care for their needs. It's definitely expressed here. These expensive gifts of worship that the wise men bought may have paid for the journey to Egypt and a new life in a strange land. These wise men journeyed in search of Jesus and God used them to help others in the process. Maybe you can be an instrument of God that he can use to help others in their search for Jesus or in their situation. But you know, there was one more person who was in search of Jesus and it was King Herod. King Herod could not cope that there would have been someone more important than him. He felt powerful and he wasn't going to give that power up to anybody else. It's interesting, you know, that he was afraid of a little child, a little baby. I mean, seriously, I think he might have had some insecurity issues here. Let's read in Matthew 2, verse 13. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in the dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. You see, Herod's pride kept him from discovering someone who could change his life for the better. Does your pride keep you from searching for Jesus? Jeremiah, who prophesied at the time of Judah's destruction by the Babylonians and their subsequent exile, tells us that God wants to be found. The obstacle is never the elusive nature of the Lord, but an issue of our own attitude. Jeremiah 29 verses 12 to 14 says, In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you will look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. I will be found by you, says the Lord. In another translation, it says, You will seek me and find me when you seek with me with your, all your heart. Janice Maiditer said, Christmas isn't so much about opening presents as opening our hearts. And I'd like to say as opening our hearts to Jesus. Corrie Tem Boone, reflecting on her experiences in a concentration camp, reminds us when she says, what a train, what a train goes through a, sorry, when a train goes through a tunnel and it gets dark, you don't throw away the ticket and jump off. You sit and still trust the engineer. And you know, it's not our situation for which we offer thanks. It's the one who accompanies us in our situation that we praise. Jesus himself was taken outside Jerusalem and he was crucified on a garbage heap. 
You know, God can always be found in the accumulated rubbish in our lives. No matter how much you feel your life is like a garbage heap and you will never amount to anything. That same resurrection power that raised Jesus off the garbage heap of our sins can resurrect your life and set you in a direction that has a future and a hope. In Romans 8, verse 11, it says, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. And perhaps you may say, oh, well, I've known Jesus for years. I'm not in search of him. And that might well be true. But how easy it is for others of us when we're going through something that we lose our focus because we're so consumed with our circumstances and what's going on that we lose focus of Jesus and we actually need to go in search of him right in our situation. We need to be able to find him. What life does to us in the long run depends on what life finds in us. So often in life, it's not the actions of others that break us, but our reaction to the actions of others. People are trying to find their satisfaction in ritualism, but it can only be found in a personal relationship with Jesus. Jesus said in John 8 verse 12, I am the light of the world. The person who follows me will never live in darkness. He will have the light that gives life. And often people feel so guilty about what they have done or what's been done to them that they run away from Jesus instead of running into his arms, the one who only truly longs to love them and help them and heal them. Jesus isn't here with a big stick ready to punish you for what you've done or what's happened to you. He is constantly here wanting to help you, forgive you and free you up and heal you because he, and he wants you to be able to do all that he originally created for you to do and created for you to be. The very costly gift of giving us his only son, Jesus, to take on the full weight and penalty of our sins and die on a cross for us was the only thing that God could do that would put right things again. Jesus took on all our muck so our slate could be wiped clean. In Psalm 86 verse 5 it says, For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. And the incredible thing about God's mercy and his love and forgiveness towards us is it's not based on what we deserve and how we've acted and what we've done. It's based on how big our God is and how he doesn't want us to live in a place of smallness, bound and restricted. He wants us to live in a place of largeness, living expansive lives, making a difference for good in the lives of others and also living in a relationship for eternity with him. You know, the good news is that Jesus didn't stay dead. On the third day, God raised him up from the dead. So now we can have a relationship with a living, victorious saviour who has defeated the powers of darkness and death and can show us how to walk in light and victory and total freedom. How good is that? I'd just like us to stop and just reflect on our walk with God and our search for Jesus at the moment and where our relationship stands. Can you focus on Jesus? Are you able to focus on him in your circumstances or do you need to search for him? And I'd just like us to reflect for a moment as Amber sings this beautiful song that she wrote. Thanks, Amber.
What beautiful words to that song. What a beautiful invitation, thanks, Amber. You know, the best hope of all is that when we ask Jesus to be part of our life, we never have to fear or worry about the future, what happens to us when we die. We have an eternal hope that we know that we will live with Christ forever. Of course, without that living hope, in us, we are doomed to an excruciating experience and existence forever in hell. Colossians 1 verse 27 says, Christ in your hearts is your only hope of glory. And today I would like to invite you to join me in prayer. And if it's your heart's desire to ask him into your heart to start a relationship with him, or perhaps Life's circumstances have taken your focus off him and you're in search of him and perhaps you just need to recommit into that relationship with Jesus. I would love you to join me and repeat this prayer after me this morning. It's up on the screen. Dear Lord Jesus, I am sorry that I've excluded you from my life. I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and you rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come in to my heart and life. Today, Jesus, I have decided to follow you as my Lord and Saviour. Amen. And if you pray that prayer today, perhaps you're praying it for the first time, or perhaps you're renewing your commitment to him. I would love you just to be able to affirm that by the uh, texting, the number, the mobile number that's up on the screen now, that you just text that. And one of our team are not here to hassle you at all. They just want to be able to help you in your next step in establishing your walk and your journey with Jesus. You will never, ever regret it. And perhaps, perhaps, you know, you weren't ready to make that decision today and that, you know, that is totally fine. There's no problem. Can I ask you, just keep searching for Jesus because he is searching for you. He will never force himself upon you into a relationship. Who wants that? But he longs to be in relationship with you. Perhaps you've got questions about Jesus or, or questions even about our Christian faith. You know, on our website, there's a tab at the top called the Jesus tab. If you go to that, there's a lot of questions that people ask. Or you can sometimes phone our church office and speak to one of our leaders. And we'd just love to be able to help you. So I'd like to be able to hand over to my wonderful husband now. And he's got some special things that we can pray for today. Well, that was a great message. You really did a good job. And Amber, thank you again for using your gift to write that song and yeah. to bless us with yeah. it. It really was special. Yeah. And to the whole worship team and all those yeah. who have helped put the service yeah. together. But right now we want to pray for some key things. So why don't you join me and add your faith to what we're praying right Amen. now. Lord Jesus, I just pray for all of those who are traveling at the moment from our church family and in fact their families as they have sought to connect or reconnect in what has been a very challenging period. I ask for your hand of protection to be upon them and they would continue to have a blessed time as they reconnect, enjoy each other's company, catch up with kids, grandkids and all the rest of it. We also remember those who during this past year have lost somebody. And right now there's an empty space, not only at the table, but also in their hearts. We thank you that you're the God of all comfort and that you will minister to them and just comfort them. And we lift them up and pray your blessing upon them. And Lord, we pray for those who are serving in defense, emergency services, police, ambulance, hospitals, who continue to serve the community, us, over this Christmas period. We ask that you would strengthen them and give them special opportunities. They catch up with family and with friends when they get the opportunity. Mm. 
and we just commit all of these things and every other need that is just mm. whispered in hearts right now. Mm. And thank you for your goodness and pray your blessing over each and every one in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, we've just got a couple of things to let you know about. Perhaps you've got some friends who missed the service today. You can let them know that this is going to be up on our website, that they can watch it. They can watch it tomorrow on yep. Boxing Day. We're having the, serv the service today still up there so people can see it on Boxing Day. And then on the 2nd of January, we won't be having any services in person, but we will be having a service that we have prepared ahead for uh, the new year. It's going to be special. Well, I know it is going to be special. I know it's going to be special, yes. Yeah. So we're going to uh, be watching that on the 2nd of January online. You'll be able to see it during the day on the Sunday. And then on the 9th of January, we're back in person at our Belcon and campus only, plus our online services. So we have our 9.30 a.m. service on the 9th of January. So that's going to be good. But look, you you know, if you forget all those, you can, if you forget all those details, you can go to the homepage on our website and it's all listed there just to be able to help you or if you get our church news email you can just all check those details during the week also well you know I think it'd be like just before Pastor Sean brings one final prayer of blessing at the end why don't we stand if you're at home why don't you just get up and stand now and we're going to sing a beautiful chorus the team are going to lead us in Agnes Day thanks team
do so love that song. Oh, it yeah. was so good. Yeah, yeah. And I hope you were able to sing along, if not with your mouth silently from your heart yeah. and just lifting your heart to the Lord in worship. Just a reminder that we do something special every Christmas day. Mm. Our offering that we take up on Christmas Day doesn't go into our church funds. It's sent out to others. And it's part of our one day offering. And one day is just something that kind of pulls it together for all the international relief programs that we're involved in as a church in Asia and other parts of the world. And it empowers our field workers to do extraordinary things. And so at Christmas, when we give and receive gifts to each other, this is about giving gifts to others who maybe in this lifetime will never be able to thank you, but the impact of your generosity. And so the full amount gets passed on through our international relief organization in the movement that we are part of. If you, there'll be given options on the screen and you can designate your one day offering, but everything that comes in on Christmas day goes to others because really that's at the very heart of God's generosity in giving his best to us. And we seek to emulate that with this opportunity. So I hope you can participate in whatever measure you can do that. I love it that we've been able to go overseas and make oh, an incredible totally. and see the difference that those one day offering makes every year. It is amazing. You cannot believe the difference, the difference yeah. your giving makes. And we just thank you ahead for your generosity, church. Yeah. We are so proud of you and the difference that our church can make every year. Just two questions, what's overseas? I've almost forgotten what traveling oh. overseas is like. Oh, no. And the other really important question before I pray is what have you cooked for lunch? Oh. Or is it up to me to do something? No, oh. no, it's just amazing what I've done. Absolutely <laughs> miraculous what I've done for Christmas. Actually, it's a team effort from it the is, whole family. I'm doing something, Linda's doing something, Deborah, yeah. other people who are coming for dinner. And I hope you're experiencing yeah. a similar thing. But it's my privilege now to pray a yeah. blessing over you mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. So maybe yeah. just put your hand on your heart mm -hmm. and just receive the blessing of God. Father, I just thank you for your goodness mm. that is demonstrated first and foremost yeah. that while we were still sinners, Christ came and yeah. died for us, that we might be reconciled to you. Yeah. And out of that richness of your generosity, all your other blessings mm. flow from Christ. Mm. And I just declare over you as you celebrate the season that God is for you, He's not against you. Mm. And then Christmas is remembering that Jesus not only came to save us, but he's Emmanuel, God with us. Mm. May you sense the presence of God today on to the end of this year mm. and into this coming year. Be blessed, mm. be blessed, be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, we want to thank everyone for joining us today. And we just say Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful day. Eat as much as you want. No. <laughs> God bless you. Bye-bye.